So let's look at number two from 2015, the free response question for AP Stats. Go ahead and pause the video, read the problem if you haven't read it already. So what's going on is we have a business and they want to give a discount and they want that discount to happen 20% of the time randomly and um, they want the discount to be 20%. I think they did that on purpose, make it a little confusing for you. But then the owner um, is not sure if it's working. He found that only 15% of their customers received a discount. So he took a sample and created this interval. So I'm gonna rewrite the interval using regular old numbers here. So that's gonna go from 15% plus or minus 6%. That's what that means. So if I subtract 6%, I get nine. And if I add it, I get 21. So my interval is between nine and 21% based off of the sample that the owner took of whatever size. So first question, does the confidence interval provide statistical evidence that the program is not working? Well, the program is supposed to work at 20%. It gives discounts 20% of the time. This interval contains the 20%. So this interval does not give evidence that it's not 20%. I might have to go back and listen to that again. Um, so here's how I'd write it up. The confidence interval is from nine to 21 percent, which includes the value of 0 0.20. Therefore, it is plausible that the computer program is generating discounts with a probability of 20 percent, and the confidence interval does not provide statistical evidence the program is not working as intended. So then they ask a follow-up question about this. Does the confidence interval provide evidence that the program generates a discount with a probability of 0 0.2? So the first time I read this, I'm like, they're asking the same question, but then they're not asking the same question. Because as I reread it, part two down here is saying, hey, okay, um, the first question is asking about whether the program, do you have evidence if it's broken? This one is, do you have evidence that it's exactly 0.2? And once again, like our interval is from 9% to 21%. So any value between those two is plausible. It's possible that it's any of those values there, you know, it doesn't have to be 0.2 based on our interval. So that being said, uh, the confidence interval includes values from nine to 21. So any value in that interval is plausible uh, for the probability the computer is using to generate discounts. Okay. So that takes care of part A. I think those were kind of do you understand the interval type questions? Now let's get, get down to part B here. A second random sample bill was taken that was four times the size of the original sample. In the second sample, 15% of the bills received a discount. It's the same value. Um, but the difference is the sample size was four times larger. So let's bring up the formula for a confidence interval. So here is the confidence interval formula that we use. Um, Remember Q is one minus P. So if you figure out P, you do one minus P and that'll give you Q. So this part of the formula right here is called the margin of error. That's the part you add and subtract. And so that was equal to 0 0.06 before, but they're saying now we're going to use a sample that's four times as large. So let's just look at that. The margin of error is equal to Z star times the square root of PQ with little hats all over N. And they said they're gonna make the sample four times larger. So what happens, what do you have to do to this equation to keep it balanced if you put a four here? Because that's really what they're doing. So let me pull that out. Instead of putting it like that, let's write it like this. Square root of one over four. That's the same, right? And so if we work that out, the square root of one, the square root of four, that's equal to one half. So in order to keep this equation valid, if you put a four here, that's the same as multiplying by a half. So that's gonna do this to the margin of error, one half, if you wanna keep the formula balanced. So there's patterns that develop, it's because of the square root. So if the sample size is four times as large, you will get a margin of error that's half. So four times on this side, you'll have to have a half. What if this is nine? So if it's nine times as large, then when you take a square root of one over nine, you get one third. The margin of error would be a third as big. So they'll ask you questions all the time about, well, if you wanna make 
generally they say if the, you want to make the margin of error half as large, what do you have to do to the sample size? Well, it has to be four times as big. If you want to make the margin of error one third of whatever that it is, then you would have to do nine times bigger. So there's a square there. You can see that cut it in half, four, cut it in third, nine. The next one would be what, four and then 16. So the formula for computing margin of error for proportion includes a square root in the denominator. For a random sample that is four times the size of the original sample, the new margin of error can be determined by multiplying the original margin of error by half. If the original margin of error is 0 0.06, the new margin of error would be 0 0.03. I think that answers part B pretty well. Now part C, based on the margin of error B, what do you conclude about the program? Well, let's work some things out here. The uh, new margin of error, they said that the sample proportion was still 15%. So we know that P hat was, let's do part C here. So P hat equals 0.15. That's the middle of it. And then you need to add and subtract the margin of error. So that's going to be plus or minus 0 0.03. That'll give us our confidence interval. So our confidence interval now that our sample size is larger is going to be from 12 to 18 percent so that is what we believe the true proportion of customers that are receiving a discount is it's between 12 and 18 percent so this in fact does give some evidence that it's no longer 0.2 or maybe it never was 0.2 the question is is p equal to 0.2 well 0 0.20 is not in this interval, so we took a larger sample, which is always better in stats. It made the margin of error a little bit lower. We still got the 0.15. So because we took a larger sample, we now have some evidence. So let's write that out. So using the margin of error of 0 0.03 obtained from the second sample, the confidence interval for P is 0.15 plus or minus 0 0.03, or 12 to 18%. This is what we got. Okay, the interval does not include 20, therefore there is convincing evidence that the computer program is not working because 0.2 is not contained in that interval. All right, that's number two, all about confidence intervals. Hope your confidence is high. Good luck.